Hold on, before we get into this video, I need y'all, if you're a sports fan and you in the conversations like the one we finna have, you gotta go follow me on my Feral Reacts channel. Y'all know this is a hip hop platform. These hip hop heads don't like all that sports content on their platform. So what I need you to do right now is head over to the platform that's on your screen right now. Feral Reacts, that YouTube channel is growing. It's a sports-based platform, meaning we're only doing sports videos, um, moments in, in time and NBA history. All happening on that platform. We finna talk LeBron joining the Lakers. Play my damn intro. I want to salute you, homie, you know, for, for building your own thing and doing your own thing, creating your own platform, your own website. I got one life to live out my dreams, and I'm giving this thing all I got. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I represent the culture. All right now you're turning up on MrTalaferro.com, shawty. Yeah. All right, Mr. Telefero TV. How's everybody doing? I'm not going to lie to you. I had the Kobe jersey on, but it wasn't cooperating with the green screen. So I took the Kobe jersey off and I just threw on a purple shirt. Now, this is one of them videos. This is one of them ones. Let me just take a step back and just get together. Do you see that what's on your screen right now? That's a real thing. Ladies and gentlemen. About an hour ago, breaking news into the platform. LeBron James, the biggest basketball player of this decade, at the age of 33, 15 years in in the NBA, has decided to take his talents, not to Miami, not back to Cleveland, but to a new spot in totality. He's joining the Los Angeles Lakers, the most prestigious franchise in the NBA in the history of the league. And I know the Celtics have more championships, but the Lakers, the most prestigious franchise in the NBA. What the heck just happened is probably what you're asking me. Let's break down a lot of variables. First and foremost, the deal is four years, 154 million. I, I'm so lost right now. I didn't even have an opportunity to look at the player option, but I'm sure there's a player option on this deal at somewhere at some point after the second year, probably. I'm guessing. Don't quote me on that. But it's four years, 154 million dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, this is LeBron James saying, I'm out of Cleveland. I've done everything I could do in Cleveland. I took them to a championship four straight years. We lost Kyrie Irving. I've gotten everything I could get out of Kevin Love. I've gotten everything I could get out of J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson. We're maxed out in the cap. I don't like the owner, Dan Gilbert. He doesn't like me. It's time for me to leave Cleveland. It's time for me to set a new, it's, it's time for something new. I can never beat Michael Jordan with six championships and no losses in the NBA Finals. But what if I am able to deliver a championship to three different organizations? What does that mean in the greatest of all time talk? I like Magic Johnson a lot. It's somebody that LeBron James looked up to when he was growing up. Now he gets to play for him. As Le Magic Johnson is the active VP for the Lakers. Jeannie Buss, the active owner for the Lakers right now, pretty much is listening to whatever Magic has to say. That's great for LeBron. They're going to listen to LeBron when he wants to go after certain guys and when he doesn't want to go after certain guys. That lack of communication that existed with Cleveland, right? Because if, for those who don't know, Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and LeBron James were not talking when LeBron opted to go back to Cleveland. They would talk through middleman. LeBron would send a message to his team and, and that team would either get it, you know, his agent and his manager, that team would get that message to either Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cavs, Cavs specifically, or somebody around Dan Gilbert and his team. LeBron and Dan Gilbert were no longer talking. They had a working relationship. If you don't remember, Dan Gilbert delivered a demoralizing message to LeBron James after he left Cleveland in 2010. LeBron's family told him don't return to Cleveland. LeBron did it anyway. He came back because Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, they were getting older. D-Wade was on his last legs. wasn't taking care of his body at the time. There was a better young team in, T in Cleveland. He could go home. Even though his family didn't want to go home, he could go home, play with a young star in Kyrie Irving who turned into a superstar. And he knew he could trade for Kevin Love with the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Cavs had that trade in their back pockets. You go back, you lose in the finals 
first year round because Kyrie was out with injury. Now, you, you, you then 2016, you turn, return, you win a championship. The last two years, you're losing the NBA Finals because you're still so great, which is what LeBron James is. You're still able to get to the Finals despite what you didn't have, right? The Golden State Warriors clearly the favorite last year. You lose in five games with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. Healthy. You come back this year, you lose Kyrie Irving. Even though LeBron told the Cleveland Cavaliers, don't trade Kyrie Irving, even though he demanded a trade, LeBron told him, don't trade Kyrie Irving. Let us get the training cap. I know he ain't rocking with me. I know he doesn't like me. He got two years left on his deal. You don't have to trade this man. Don't trade him. And let us work it out in training camp. Let us get together and, and let us as men talk it out and see where we stand. I, LeBron believed he could beat the Warriors with Kyrie. Give it one more shot. He believed they could beat the Warriors. I doubt it would have happened, but LeBron believed that. You trade Kyrie Irving without the consent of LeBron James. That was the beginning of the end because you trade him for Isaiah Thomas. He was injured. You miss Isaiah Thomas for the first half of the season. So LeBron now has the weight on his back to carry the Cavs for about three to four months. They get off to a, a rough start. Then they get really hot. Then they go back to a rough patch around December, January. Isaiah returns in the middle of that rough patch. And it ain't working out with Isaiah. Now, would it have worked out with Isaiah a year or two down the line? Maybe. But with LeBron James, it's championship or bust every year, especially when he's in the last year of his deal. You got to trade Isaiah Thomas at the deadline. You trade Isaiah Thomas. You, you pretty much get rid of the whole roster. You move everything out that was dead weight. You bring in Larry Nash, Jordan Clarkson, and Rodney Hood. You get to the finals. I like what Jordan Clarkson did occasionally. I thought Larry Nance competed every time he was on the court. Rodney Hood, I don't know what the heck was going on with him. He didn't want to play anymore. Tyron Lue, probably not the best coach to coach these guys. You lose and you get swept in the finals. And LeBron had to carry that team to the NBA Finals, knocking down buzzer beaters, going seven with the Pacers, going seven with the Celtics. And going forward with the Warriors in the opposite direction. Not the way you want to go forward. LeBron looks up. And, and I'll give LeBron this, this blame in this regard. That mess he helped create while the, the, the Cavs are so stuck financially is his mess. J.R. Smith, that deal that he can't come out of. I think he got another year or two left on his deal. That's LeBron's mess. Tristan Thompson, signing long term. That's LeBron's mess. What are you talking about, Telefero? LeBron wanted the Cavs for two straight years. I believe this was after the 2015 season and after the 2016 season. First year, Tristan Thompson was a free agent. LeBron hopped on the internet and was like, yo, Cavs, I don't know what's going on, but y'all know I've already left y'all once. I'll leave again. I don't know what's going on. Go get my guy Tristan Thompson paid. Not only are LeBron and Tristan Thompson and J.R. Smith close friends, but LeBron James is... Uh, best friend, one of his closest friends, his agent, Rich Paul, manages Tristan Thompson and J.R. Smith. LeBron gets on social media and says, yo, yo, y'all gotta get, y'all gotta get Tristan Thompson paid immediately. We gotta make this happen now. I need my guy back in the training camp. It's time to get started. We gotta win a championship. You go get Tristan Thompson paid. The following summer, LeBron does the exact same thing with training camp all around the corner. So first off, they give Tristan Thompson $80 million. Nobody in their right mind was going to give $80 million, but the Cavs had no choice because they don't want to piss off LeBron James for a second straight time. You give, you give Tristan Thompson $80 million. Nobody was going to give Tristan Thompson that type of money. And I like Tristan at that point, a rebounder, hustle hard at that point, before the Kardashians, nobody was giving him $80 million. Period. Okay, the next summer. You go give J.R. Smith like 45 million. You give him about you give him like 13, 14, and 15 million a season in consecutive years that it went up every year. You go give him about 45 million dollars. Listen to me when I tell y'all this. I want I'm looking right in the camera when I tell y'all this. Take my word for this. Nobody had made an offer. No other team had made an offer for J.R. Smith outside of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Not one team in the NBA had offered J.R. Smith a contract that year that he was a free agent the Cavs outbid it themselves is what i'm trying to tell you they were bidding 
against themselves. They gave an agent J.R. Smith about 40 to $45 million. That was because LeBron James hopped on social media and said, yo, let's get this deal done with J.R. Smith, similar to, to how the summer before that, he had did the exact thing with Tristan Thompson. Now the Cavs are playing role players who sometimes give you zero points, zero rebounds, zero anything on given nights. Sometimes Tristan Thompson gives you two rebounds. Sometimes J.R. Smith goes 0 for 8 in the game. I'm not lying. I'm not making this up. And you just gave them over $120 million combined. You're giving them, you gave J.R. Smith really, really good player money. And you gave Tristan Thompson all-star level money. J.R. Smith no longer plays like a really, really good player. And Tristan Thompson, for damn sure, doesn't play like an all-star. That was another step that we were leading toward the end of this Cleveland Cavaliers relationship. And I don't like the fact that LeBron James helped create that mess in Cleveland, and he just walks away from it. Now, let's fast forward. We, we, you lose to Golden State, free agency happens. If you know me, all my close friends know I have been telling them for the last week or two, yo, he going to L.A. I seen how he was moving. LeBron was on a vacation 48 to 72 hours ago. He flew into L.A. a night ago. And he met with the Lakers. This was just confirmation. He was flying to L.A. to confirm that he was going to be a part of the Lakers. I knew LeBron wanted to be a Laker when it leaked that he told the Lakers, I'm coming, I I'm willing to come even if y'all don't get Paul George. We seen what Paul George did last night. Yo, this is a, to me, as a, a, a person who studied the game of basketball and worked at ESPN and all these beautiful outlets in sports, to me, this is my opinion, it looks like LeBron is, because he's joining the Lakers with no all-stars and no other top pieces, like that's not a championship contending team right there. To me, it looks like LeBron James was more focused on leaving Cleveland than he was joining LA. He'd rather join a team that has no chance at winning a championship and go to the Western Conference where you know the Golden State Warriors are present, where you know the Houston Rockets are present. By the way, the Lakers are not better than any of those two teams as currently constructed. When you know teams like Minnesota is only getting better, right? Teams like Denver only getting better. The Thunder, they're reloaded. We'll see what happens with them. The Pelicans had a good year. They were getting hot right before DeMarcus Cousins tore his Achilles. So you go to the West with all those things, and a young team that's led by a, a then rookie point guard now in his sophomore year in the league, Lonzo Ball, who couldn't stay healthy last year, and a Brandon Ingram. And I like Brandon Ingram's game, but it's undeveloped. It, he needs a couple more years. He has some Kevin Durant-like tendencies. He just needs time. But LeBron's in win-now mode. I like Kyle Kuzma's game. Very mature for his age. But to put him in a position where it's now championship or bust, is he ready for that? Uh, Luke Walton? Is he ready to coach this team to a championship? I like Luke, by the way. I like him. Better than Tyron Luke. But is he ready to win a championship? Is that team ready to win a championship? I think this is more about LeBron wanting to get away from the mess that he helped create in Cleveland. From a basketball standpoint, I wouldn't put them over the Warriors. I wouldn't put them over the Spurs. Oh, yeah, if, if the Spurs come back with Kawhi, if they don't trade Kawhi, I'll get to that in a second. I wouldn't put the Lakers over the Spurs. And I love LeBron. I, and I wouldn't put them over the Rockets. Those three teams, for sure I'm not putting them over. The Thunder, they lose a lot of regular season games that they shouldn't lose. We'll see what happens. Paul George seems, seems rejuvenated. Russ seems rejuvenated. We'll see what Melo has left in the tank. I ain't putting them over them three teams right there. And I love LeBron. And speaking on me loving LeBron, I've been a Laker. I've, I've been a Laker fan since I was five. I, I've grown to love LeBron for like the last four or five years. Like I love LeBron. He's my favorite player, uh, uh, pretty much of the last. Yeah, Kobe's one and LeBron's two. My favorite players of all time. My favorites. And I'm gonna say this: I respect LeBron more than I respect Kobe because I respect the person LeBron. I think he's a good overall human being. As a Laker fan, I'm, I'm. I'm not going to say 100% I'm sold on it. Like, I'm mixed. I really didn't, I, I wasn't pushing for this as a Laker fan because I wanted them young them young cats, Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram, as a Laker fan and Kyle Kuzma, they're not ready to win now. Lonzo, he, he got a lot of growing up to do. They're not ready to win right now. And we'll see what they do with Julius Randle. They're not ready to, he's a, a restricted free agent. 
they're not ready to win right now. I wanted them young bulls to just grow. And every no one, everyone doesn't have to win a championship every year. I want the Lakers to take their time, take the the Seattle C, uh, Seattle SuperSonics slash Oklahoma City Thunder approach, right? And just build, build, build. Get star after star. Stay in the lottery if you got to, and build this thing from the ground up. Remember the Thunder, the, the Sonics slash Thunder were bad when they first got Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, and then they got hard, and then things started turning around. That's what I wanted this young Laker team to do. You bring LeBron in the mix, all that build, build, build stuff is over. It's championship or bust every year with LeBron. And the Lakers were already one of the most popular teams because of the Lakers, and then they got Lonzo Ball, and with that, that comes LeVar Ball, and now you're bringing the biggest player, the most talked about NBA free agent ever, meaning there was a helicopter flying over him when he was landing in Los Angeles. This dude, this ain't OJ Simpson. This ain't a murder case. They just wanted to watch this man's every move. Meaning every, I used to work at ESPN, trust me, I know how they operate. There's a camera on LeBron James, any chance they can get him walking around in public spaces. That's how big this is. That's how big he is. The most talked about and scrutinized athlete in NBA history. I'm conflicted as a Laker fan. I, I'm not 100%. It's, I mean, it's cool, I guess, to say LeBron's on the Lakers, but to act like I'm just overjoyed, nah, bruh. Because I remember growing up being a Kobe fan, arguing against the LeBron fans, and now that the LeBron fans have to become Laker fans, it's just weird to me. Just weird. Now, let's talk about the basketball standpoint of what the freaking Lakers can do right now. They have two options, in my opinion. I just seen that they gave Contavious Caldwell Pope $12 million for one year. That doesn't really matter long term. It's just a one-year deal. He's a Rich Paul guy, which is LeBron's agent, his close friend. That's probably was part of LeBron signing on. He was like, yo, give my guy Rich Paul a, a $12 million deal, right? A one-year $12 million deal. That, that's nothing. That really doesn't matter. That cap's not going to hurt them going forward. Here's my thing, though. They have two moves they can make. DeMarcus Cousins tore his Achilles. I, I mentioned that earlier in this video. He'll be out to likely the top of 2019, at least. Probably around All-Star Weekend. If I were the Lakers, the Pelicans don't want to give DeMarcus Cousins max money right now. They don't want to do it coming off that Achilles injury. They don't want to commit. He's a big guy. He's 6'9", 6'10". Big dude, man. Chisel dude. You don't want to give him max money until you see what's going on with his Achilles. If I were the Lakers, if I can get DeMarcus Cousins on a rental, because he's going to want that max contract, and he's going to want to show teams that he still got it, Next year, if he can come back, if I was the Lakers, I'd give him 15, 20 million a year. They got it. They can do that, by the way. Even signing Contavious Caldwell Pope, that was one of their guys. They can do it. They wouldn't be able to sign Julius Randle, but they could give Cousins that money. I'd bring back Cousins. I'll get Cousins, take him away from the Pelicans, see what he has, and see what that Lakers team can do in the playoffs with that group and Cousins if he's healthy at that time. And from there, you got summer 2019. It looks like Kawhi Leonard has his mind set on joining the Lakers. Now, that's iffy. Remember, Paul George said he wanted to be a Laker a year ago, and he got happy in Oklahoma City, and they didn't even win anything. The Thunder were trash this year. They lost in the first round to the, a rookie-led Utah Jazz team. That's a risk if you're the Lakers because you you risk what happened with Paul George. Just this, It just happened the other day. Remember, Paul George wanted to be a Laker. He grew up in the, in the California area. He's been a Laker fan his whole life. A year happened. He got happy in the Thunder. They made great pitches. He got close to Russell Westbrook, and he ain't want to leave yesterday. So you risk that with Kawhi. I think the Lakers are going to try to probably likely have to wait this thing out a year for Kawhi, and then in 2019 summer, they can get Kawhi straight up and down, sign him as a free agent. You Then you could keep Cousins if he's great and still sign Kawhi. If not, you, you, you can let Cousins go, sign Kawhi straight up and down, and then they can create enough cap room to go get another close to max guy because Brandon Ingram's still on a rookie deal. Kyle Kuzma's going to be on a rookie deal for another couple years. Lonzo Ball's on a rookie deal. So you can do that. You can do that. They benefit from all these young guys being on rookie deals. Josh Hart on a rookie deal. So again, in regards to Kawhi Leonard, the Lakers are going to aggressively push for Kawhi Leonard, but the Spurs want Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, um, picks on top of picks. And even then, they said they might make that trade. They're not even 100% sure they'll make that trade. The Spurs want everything from the Lakers. And I'm telling y'all this, because they know the Lakers got LeBron now, they're going to want even more. They're going to tax them just because. That has nothing to do with them, but just because they know they're creating a really, really good team, they're going to want more. So long term, you probably get Kawhi Leonard next year, maybe. You know, what happens if, if he, what if Kawhi beat the Spurs this year? 
Last time Kawhi played in the series against the, the Golden State Warriors. Excuse me. What if the Kawhi and the uh, Spurs beat the Warriors this year? Excuse me. Last time we seen Kawhi in a series against the, the against the Warriors, he was up 20 at halftime against them in Golden State. I'm just saying. What if Kawhi got to the finals? He's happy. What if he won a ring ne next year? And he's happy in, in San Antonio and doesn't want to leave anymore. We just seen it happen with Paul George. They won nothing, but he got happy in Oklahoma City and wanted to stay. Sign a four-year extension. So there are a lot of variables in regards to the Kawhi thing. I know the Lakers are going to aggressively push for Kawhi tonight and tomorrow. We'll see what the Spurs do. I doubt they trade him. I doubt they trade him. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe I'm making this video. I can't believe these words are about to come out of my mouth. But if you're listening to this video, if you got this far, I appreciate the love and support. LeBron James is a Los Angeles Laker. Wow. This man is the most talked about athlete in NBA history. And every four years, he gives us compelling storylines year after year after year. Wow. The most talked about athlete in NBA history has done it again. The biggest storyline this year, last year, and the year before that. LeBron joins the Lakers. For more exclu exclusive quality content like this, you got to head over. Y'all know these hip-hop fans don't like all that sports talk. We doing it on my sports platform every day. Subscribe to my Fair Reacts channel, please. You get it first there. I'm out.